Hi everyone, Kansi here from Atop Serenity Hill and today I'm going to show you some simple art supplies to get you started with art journaling or if you are already an art journaler, maybe a way to set up um, a simple to-go kit for yourself uh, or if you're just looking to rekindle your love of a creative practice, maybe you can pull together these supplies to get you started in an easy, very um, non-perfect, gentle way. So I've been teaching a few classes recently that are with people that are all completely new to art journaling. And one of the requirements was to share supplies that they didn't have to go out and buy a ton of stuff that maybe they could find around their house. And so that's what I wanted to bring to you today. So when you get started with art, art journaling, um, it is in a journal, but it doesn't have to be a bought journal. It can be as simple as um, a zine. This is an eight and a half by 11 piece of printer paper. You can see here, oops, printer paper. And it is decorated um, with some stencils and watercolor, very simple supplies, folded up. And then you would have a really simple art journal that you could play in, okay? Um, the video for making this and how I made this are gonna be right here and obviously linked below. So a simple zine, so you don't need to buy a journal, you can just get a piece of paper and fold it up. Um, it doesn't even have to be decorated and then just play in it. The other option uh, is this little journal here, which is also made from an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. This is part of a free mini art journaling class that I have. Again, the link will be below for you. And it's printed out and folded up and then glued. And so then you have a tiny little art journal to work in. One of the things I stress about art journaling is one, it needs to be simple supplies. Two, it helps immensely if the surface is small to start with. So you don't overwhelm yourself with the amount of space that you need to cover. And three is short amounts of time. So can you do a minute here, five minutes here, 15 minutes there, as opposed to these large chunks of time to get you uh, motivated, okay? So to get you started, you need as simple as a piece of printer paper and fold it up. And then as far as some supplies, uh, if you're looking for collage material, let me push some of these out of the way. If you're looking for collage material, you cannot get any better than either like a catalog or uh, this is a catalog or a magazine. You don't have to purchase them if you don't want to. Ask a neighbor. I'm, everyone gets catalogs in the mail. It doesn't have to be, you know, an outdoor magazine like this. I love outdoor clothing magazines because... The photography usually has some gorgeous backgrounds to it. And that way you have color here, pattern here. Um, not a ton of words when it comes to catalogs as far as inspirational quotes or words, but they are there. But the other thing that a lot of catalogs are, are not super glossy. Um, this one is a little bit, but there's some that come that are very newsprinty. And so those are, are beautiful. But... You have all the color and pattern that you could possibly want, even really fun elements like this, you know, moose deer head, not sure what it is, um, to pull from gorgeous scenery that you could use in the collage. So as far as um, magazines, don't forget that magazines are um, something you can maybe go to your local library and ask. They do give them away after a certain amount of years that they can't use them anymore. You can go to the front of like a grocery store. They have those uh, car stands with free magazines. Even if it's just a real estate magazine, it still has interesting photos in it that you can use. Um, and then the other thing that you can find in magazines are, you know, words or loving, sharing, and celebrating. This would be a quote or words that you could add to an art journal page. Um, down to earth would be something perhaps. It depends what the page is about. You could pop in and out and just see like, you know, I love this, what I'm loving right now would be. And just go through and cut out some words that you find interesting. The word just kisses if you wanted. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. You know, um, let the sun shine in. I'm just flipping through and just showing you 
some general gists. But again, you can see in magazines, obviously, there's tons of scenery as well. So you've got interesting collections of people, especially a magazine that's not a, um, like a fashion magazine. This is Southern Living. So it has more different, all different kinds of advertisements in it, not just fashion. So people are in different angles and, and looking in different ways and they're not just dressed in, you know, couture, which is fun. It has its place. Um, and as you can see, I've already ripped up this magazine. Uh, lots of fun colors that you can use for collage backgrounds. Um, you know, you could rip out the door and use it as a collage, put something in the windows that's kind of interesting. So you don't have to go searching for collage material. Just find a local magazine, a local magazine, it could be local, um, a magazine locally or a catalog. And then of course you need a glue stick. I don't even use scissors, I rip everything up. But if you feel like you need a pair of scissors, that would be handy. All right, so the next couple things are to add some color. So, not the stencil, but a cheap set of watercolors. Um, I have all different kinds of watercolor sets. Even if you just rated, um, you know, the children's department with Crayola watercolors, they are absolutely perfect. Uh, I will link a couple of supplies below so you have different options if you're looking for that. This watercolor set is something, uh, I don't even have a brand on it, but it is found in most craft stores. Um, if you're Hobby Lobby, AC Moore, Joann's, Michael's, you know, if you're here in the U.S., um, even Walmart and Target all have craft departments and have a set similar to this. It has an amazing amount of colors available and it's inexpensive. So if you wanted to just do some paint, a watercolor set's perfect. The brushes that come with them usually are horrible. Let's put it mildly. So um, a, a round brush is just fine. These are a six or a nine, I should say, and a seven. Nope, a six. Six and a seven round. Doesn't matter, just a round brush. And if you wanted something that was a little more portable, a water brush is always an option. There is a reservoir at the bottom that holds the water. So the brush is always wet and you just need a piece of paper towel to wipe it off on. So if you're using a round brush and watercolor, you might need a little like yogurt container for some water, or perhaps if you wanted to invest in a water brush, that's always good, especially if what you're using this video for is to find maybe a way to travel with some supplies. So that's one idea for color. And then if you wanted to add some more color, we have a couple more supplies that I think you could add inexpensively to a kit is some kind of mark making tool. Um, one, I love a black pen, a black waterproof pen or doodle marker. Uh, I love Sharpie pens. One, they're waterproof. Two, they're easy to find. And three, they do not bleed through paper. Um, that's what Sharpie pens were designed for as opposed to a traditional Sharpie. They will bleed. So I love this as a doodle marker. Um, so this I this is a must for me. The other thing is you can do a variety of things. You could have some paint markers. These are Posca paint markers. You can find these pretty much anywhere now. You used to only be able to buy them online, but now I see them in all the craft stores. There's always Sharpies. Sharpies come in, you know, your regular Sharpie marker, Sharpie fine print, fine, the ultra fine has a really fine tip. This is, you know, a Sharpie retractable that I found in my, my uh, stash. So markers are always good. Um, again, children's markers. If you have kids that you know, or you have children, or nieces or nephews or neighbors with children, and you just want to try out some supplies, go grab their markers and see what happens. Um, I've also got, the other option is some colored pencils. I have two different versions of what I would consider. This is a, a traditional colored pencil by Prismacolor. Again, cheap colored pencils. Go to the dollar store, try them out, see if you like them. Um, you don't need to go and buy expensive supplies unless it's something you really love. Then go and invest in them. So this is regular colored pencils. These colored pencils are actually ink tense pencils. So they're like kind of like a watercolor pencil. So they're they do two things. One, you can draw with them. And two, you can then wet what you've drawn or use the tip of the 
pen, um, pencil as paint because the the color inside this pencil is actually solidified ink and so they have a twofold they can be paint or they can be a drawing tool so something like a watercolor pencil or these ink tents pencils from derwent derwent yes derwent ink tents pencils um, again all the links will be below for everything that i feel that um, you might want to be interested in uh, are good another option is crayons crayola crayons go with them that those work beautifully and they give you color and you can put down lots of background color really quickly. Another option are these Neo2 colors which do the same thing as the ink tent. So you've got your colored pencil ink tents, Crayola crayons and Neo2 color crayons. These are also water soluble as opposed to your Crayola. So you can color with them and then you can also wet them down and spread the color out. So some kind of colorful mark making tool and something black is always great um, to make some doodle marks or anything with. Just grab one of them, something that's that you have handy, and that's a great way to get started. The other two things that I like to suggest is to have a stencil. And if you're going to go buy a stencil, or if you have the ability, if you maybe have a cutting machine and you can cut a stencil from like a Cricut or a Silhouette or something. Um, I like stencils that have multiple different designs on them as opposed to just an all over pattern. So this one you can see has multiple different sections. So this one stencil has so many uses as far as putting down backgrounds or adding marks to an art journal page. So find yourself something with a stencil. I um, use stencils with my watercolor. I know a lot of people like to use them with acrylic paints. I'll just use them with the watercolor. You could use a little makeup sponge if you wanted to to go through it. You could just use the brush. Um, I mean, you could literally put your finger in paint and dab through them, okay, and, and make the marks with your finger. A paper, piece of paper towel, a baby wipe. If you have a baby wipe, we'll pull up some of the watercolor and dab through your stencil. Keep it simple and look for what you have in your home. So the last thing I have for you right now is um, if you love rubber stamps or would like to do rubber stamps, then start with black ink. Again, something waterproof. Um, it doesn't have to be permanent, acid-free. Permanent waterproof is the most, I mean, it does have to be permanent if it's waterproof, but acid-free and all that. But the waterproof is important because if you tend to put watercolor back on top of it for any reason. You don't want what you did to bleed. So I always do a waterproof black ink. Um, I now have all the colors, but I've had black ink for a very long time without buying any color. And then a couple rubber stamps. Um, these are ones that I've carved out of just erasers. So you can do that if you want to, or just go to maybe the dollar store or a dollar bin or the target spot and see if there's some little itty bitty rubber stamps that you can just get to get yourself started. Um, they could be patterns like little florals or letters or whatever works, um, whatever intrigues you. And uh, just a couple of rubber stamps will get you started. So that's what I would start with as far as art supplies. You know, some uh, something to be in, you know, something to be in, a journal. So a piece of paper folded up it gives you, you know, eight pages. I think this one, when it folds, gives you like 12 pages. So you've got something simple to begin with. See if you like it. Um, you know, some color, watercolor, some kind of mark making tool. You know, pick one. It doesn't have to be all of them. Pick one. Uh, you know, some collage material and a glue stick would be fun. Um, a stencil, maybe a couple rubber stamps. Okay. So I hope that gives you an idea of how to just get started, collect a few materials that you maybe have around your house. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to pick a few little things and I'm gonna work through one of the pages in this little book. I'll actually work through two since it opens as a double spread and show you what I would do with the supplies that I just showed you. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I'd be happy to answer any questions about supplies or how to get started, don't forget that you can grab your own version of this little book below in the mini class. It's free. Um, it includes the book, a collage, 
a collage page and some art prompts for you and three videos to get you started, lots of ideas. And of course, just go down the rabbit hole of my uh, YouTube channel here. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Giving it a thumbs up is always, always helpful. And I hope that you will join me here and continue on your art journal journey. All right, so I'm going to play, put some music on, and I'll see you all in another video.